Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Mauser Electronics, the electronic components distributor with the widest selection of the newest products, we're designing smart cubes for the stubborn drinkers, building a better bicycle, and re-engineering a 1977 Lotus Esprit. For those close to me, they know that I'm a huge, and I'm talking ginormous people, whiskey aficionado. Jack is where it's at. Add my German-Irish heritage, and there are moments where I forget to keep track and end up having one too many. I'm just saying. One MIT Media Lab student has created a solution to help some of us with our overachieving drinking habits. Smart ice cubes. Ice cubes that track how much you drink and then flash from green to red when you've had too much. Each cube is comprised of a colored LED, an accelerometer, IR receivers, and a battery which are molded into an edible waterproof jelly to keep the circuitry protected without affecting the taste of the drink. Highly important. The accelerometer calculates the number of sips a person takes and compares it with a timer to estimate their level of intoxication and then change the color of the flashing LED. For those stubborn drinkers who will ignore the flashing red, a text will be sent to a designated friend to ask them to step in. As a bonus, the LEDs will flash in time to ambient noise, such as music at a party. To measure the level of intoxication accurately, the cubes will need to be set according to various factors of the individual drinking, such as body weight. Why do I sense a potential dr new drinking game coming on? Hey, who can get their ice cubes red first? For the casual rider, bicycle design has been pretty good to go for decades. With a bit of upkeep, your father's bicycle can still get you from A to B. But who knows, maybe my setting just isn't urban enough. Of the few remaining pains that plague the modern rider, the new N-Cycle concept e-bike seems to have offered a solution. The first is a locking mechanism that replaces clunky locks with the new N-Lock. Taking advantage of the bike's loopy dual handle system, a hardened steel bar slides from the handles to make a lock that is virtually impossible to break or cut with any man-powered pliers. With a battery-powered electric motor, Bluetooth speakers, and integrated headlights, the N-Cycle also features a holographic display that sits on top of the handlebars and mirrors the rider's smartphone. The feature hopes, hopes to keep hands from swiping through abs and on the handlebars. The e-bike also boasts a simple three-step foldable frame that can be broken down in seconds. Actually, the only thing that isn't innovative about this design is the name. N-Cycle? What, did we run out of small eyes? And why not show the Q-some love? I'd buy a Q-Cycle. Ever pondered the ability to log into any of your accounts password-free? Google's security team has finished a research paper discussing the logistics and technology that would allow ring finger authentication. That's right, a ring might soon be your key to all of your Google lockboxes. The Google security team felt that passwords and, and simple barrier tokens were no longer sufficient defense against hacking. So, they're experimenting with ways to use tiny Yubico cryptographic cards that are inserted into a USB reader as keys to all of your accounts. As this technology develops, they are hoping to utilize the Yubico concept with wireless technology, and then, voila, a ring that opens up your digital Pandora's box. One of the two major challenges includes getting other sites to play ball with the technology. Otherwise, you'd be stuck with a keychain full of Yubicos, and nobody wants to look like a digital janitor. The other tricky problem lies in human nature, theft. Kind of like writing your PIN number on your debit card. Losing this key or succumbing to thievery would find you in a tight spot, as the crook would instantly have access to all of your digital persona. Granted, most banks and websites have fail-safes against such things, it would still be quite a pain to change all your passwords and move your accounts. With a universal key, I'm sure to forget every password I have. I can't even remember my girlfriend's phone number since it's in my phone. Final testing is underway for NASA's next small explorer mission that will study the little understood lower levels of the sun's atmosphere. Scheduled to launch in April 2013, the Interface Region Imaging Spectrograph, or IRIS, will use high resolution images, data, and advanced computer models to unravel, unravel how matter, light, and energy move from the sun's surface to its outer atmosphere. Such movement ultimately heats the sun's atmosphere to temperatures much hotter than the surface and greatly impacts conditions on Earth. 
The mission carries a single instrument, an ultraviolet telescope combined with an imaging spectrograph that will both focus on the chromosphere and the transition region. The telescope will only see about 1% of the sun at a time and resolve that image to show features on the sun as small as 150 miles across. NASA's Small Explorer program is designed to provide frequent, low-cost access to space for missions using small to mid-size aircraft. But let's be careful up there, Iris. No need to be the bull in the china shop when it comes to the Earth's lifeblood. You break it, you buy it. Terrible. At-risk high school students in Kansas City have re-engineered a donated 1977 Lotus Esprit to be a two-seater sports car that is completely electrical. After laboring every weekend for several months, 15 team members from five different schools have emerged with a reformed Lotus. Key factors included refreshing the suspension and slightly modifying the classic body for improved aerodynamics. The electric drivetrain is powered by 33.2 volt Li-Ion batteries and a chain drive motor. Now the team has managed to drive their tastefully Frankenstein's Lotus coast to coast from San Diego to Jacksonville. The team even made a pit stop at Bridgestone's Texas Proving Ground near Fort Stockton to test the driving efficiency. With 218 miles per gallon equivalency at 40 miles per hour the, and only an hour to charge, efficiency wasn't top ranked, but for a former gas guzzler, they did pretty well. Efficiency aside, you have to admit, other than a Tesla, this thing looks way cooler than any hybrid on the road. What is it with green cars and always being so ugly? Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For pd and TV, I'm Megan Zimba and this has been your Engineering Newswire.